Well, hello, howdy, hi, and shalom, brethren. It's so good to see you. I know I've been away for a while. I've been waiting for things to calm down and feel like I've been led to bring some things forward. So I'm not going to discuss the current events because, honestly, my attention is on our Heavenly Father and His Word. So as I'm looking at these things, I want to bring forth another commonly misunderstood um, saying, a Hebrew saying, that is in Romans 12. And let me read this for you guys so that you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So if you want to join me in Romans 12, we'll start at about 9, go down to about 15, 16. So, and this is about how we are to treat one another and be about being brotherly and loving. And so this is what Shaul's been given to tell us. He's telling us just exactly what that is. And part of this is commonly misunderstood. So we're going to look at it again. Now it says in 9, let love be without hypocrisy and shrink from what is wicked. Cling to what is right in brotherly love, tenderly loving towards one another in appreciation, giving preference to one another. Not idle in your duty, but ardent, zealous in your ruach, serving the master, rejoicing in the expectancy and enduring the pressures, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Imparting to the needs of the set apart ones, pursuing kindness towards strangers. And it says Barak or this word bless that we use is Barak here. And it means to bestow a gift, to bend the knee. It is really a picture of humbling yourself to a point to where you're laying down your pride and you're bestowing a gift upon this person. It might be honoring their name or honoring them with some kind of a kindness. So it says to humble yourselves and bend the knee to those who persecute you. In other words, humble yourself, give a gift. So humble yourself and give a gift and do not curse. So bring honor to both their name and yours. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not be proud in mind, but go along with the lowly. And do not be wise in your own estimation. Repay no one evil for evil. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. And if possible, on your part, be at peace or have shalom with all men. Beloved, revenge is yas. Do not revenge yourself, but give place to the wrath. For it has been written, vengeance is mine and I shall repay, says Yahuwah. Instead of your, if your enemy hungers, feed him. And if he thirsts, give him a drink. And in doing so, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome evil with evil, but evil with what is right or righteous. So the context here is he's saying not to repay evil. He's not, the context there isn't that Yah is going to repay the evil. He will. Absolutely. All of us will have to answer for whatever wickedness we do if we're not unrepentant of it. So, but that's not the point here. The point is, and the, why the point is missed, is understanding what that means to heap coals upon their head. And I'm not talking about in Proverbs 25, where it's talking about heaping the coals upon his head. That word there is actually more better translated as ashes, but we'll get into that another time. Here is literally telling us to humble ourselves and do something kind for somebody. So you might think, well, how is that possible that we're doing something kind if we're heaping coals upon their head? Well, in the ancient Middle East, this would make more sense. So I'm going to take you to this. This is from BC. Okay, so this is an ancient sculpture or pottery of um, about 500 BC or so. And this is a picture of uh, a Hebrew person with the pot upon their head. This is how they carried things around commonly and still during Messiah's time, commonly they carried that around. Um, I'll give you another picture so you can kind of get a, a glimpse. And this is someone, this is obviously 
more like India, but they are carrying a basket upon their head with coal. And in that coal, they would have hot embers. So when it's telling you to heap coal upon their head, it is not necessarily saying that you're bringing shame, which is what is often taught, that they will feel shame by how what you're doing. We hope that their conscience is pricked and that they see that, wow, okay, I'm treating this person terribly, but they're treating me so kindly. That is the ultimate goal is to bring them to repentance. But this is about you and how you are interacting with them, about how each and every one of us is to act towards one another, to treat each other with and greet each other with brotherly love, but also go out of our way to be kind to strangers and to those who persecute us, to bend our knee, if you will, and bestow a gift, to humble ourselves, to bring ourselves low, below them, beneath them, to esteem them to be higher than ourselves and give a gift of kindness. If you went to bed with hot coals and a fire burning when you woke up and your coals were down to nothing and you did not have enough to start a fire. Oftentimes you would have to go out to your neighbors and you would have to ask if you could borrow from them. Now, if you had a contentious relationship with your neighbor, then this would be quite a put upon for them to actually give you. But that's what is being extolled here is they're saying that your enemy who has now treated you unkindly, that when they are in need, that we are not only to meet their needs, but we are to be ultimately kind to them. And this might prick their conscience and bring them to repentance. But more, moreover, it's about how you are, about you not leaning on your own understanding of things, but changing the way we think about one another. We can always say, oh, I'm doing this. Hopefully this will bring them around. Well, then you have the wrong heart. If your heart is, I'm going to give this person, you know, they have no coal to start a fire. They won't be able to cook their food, heat their water. They won't be able to sustain their life within that home. If it's cold out and it gets very cold, if it's cold, they won't be able to heat their homes. A lot of things could happen. So out of your loving kindness for one another, you would give them some hot coals in that basket, they call it a brassier. They often were made out of brass and other metals. And then they would put that in a basket or they would just carry, as you saw before, in a basket. And there would be this um, this pad they would put down upon their head and they would carry this home. So they would have these hot coals in the middle. They would put regular coal that was in the house that was heated on top of that, which would create more. So by the time you got home, you had more hot coals as well. So this often misunderstood Middle Eastern saying wasn't necessarily about talking about do something kind to them so Yah will punish them. It's telling you don't be evil. It's telling you be ultimately kind and think about each other more highly than you think of yourself to revere them with loving kindness and compassion as our Heavenly Father has on us. So he has given us a gift. He has humbled himself through his Messiah and son. He humbled himself because he did not have to make a way for us through his son, but he did. And he left his lofty estate, Yahushua did, and he came down among us and he gave his life in our stead. What an amazing thing. So he's asking no less of us to be kind to one another, to lift up the stranger, to lift up the, the one who wants to do wicked and persecute us, just to, to be kind to them, to be considerate and compassionate. This is the least that we can do. So anyway, so this misunderstood, oftenly taught that it's about, you know, Yah will revenge. It's really not. He will, if that's what has to happen. But you couldn't imagine how much your kindness, a smile, a kind word to somebody you really don't like can change that person over time. If every time you see that person, no matter what, you're kind to them, if it doesn't change them, it changes you. So be kind to one another, loving and giving. Don't worry about bending the knee in humility and bestowing a gift on somebody who doesn't deserve it because that's exactly what our Heavenly Father through His Son and Messiah did. So guys, thank you for joining me. 
We love you. We've missed you. I will put forth some more things coming up. There's quite a bit to do, almost overwhelmingly so. But in these times, hang on to the hope and the love and the light that is in the word. And follow no man, but follow the word. Shalom. We'll see you again. Thanks, guys.